are convinced that, that um, the battles aren't being fought in certain arenas and that we can't be in certain arenas because it's not proper, it's not right. Guys, wherever God, the battles are being fought for morals and ethics, that's the arena that we got to get involved in. Unfortunately, it's going to be involved some political action and activity. Um, we got a friend of ours, in the, um, Orrin Smith, with the Palmetto Family Council. Orrin, stand up. If you don't know Orrin Smith and you don't, you're not a member of the Palmetto Family Council, guys, you need to get that done before you leave here today. The Palmetto Family Council is the best tool we got in the state of South Carolina to keep us informed of what's going on in our state from a legislative standpoint. These, yeah. I want to interrupt you, but that 20 weeks ago could happen in the next, in the next hour. So we're kind of sitting on go. The pain capable bill is, is at the House or on the governor's House. For two years we have fought this battle. To, to get this pain-capable bill passed. 28 states already have this thing done. We're the most conservative state in the United States. 80% of the people in the state of South Carolina claim to be Christian conservative. That means out of about 4 million, we ought to have 3 million warriors for Christ. 3 million. Where are they? We're in there fighting a bill for pain-capable and we got 25 people there. 25 people. I go to my pastor and I say, where are we? He said, what is pain capable? One of the leading pastors in this state. He knows nothing about it. We don't have the ability to communicate. You heard Josh say it a while ago. The Christian chamber is going to be about communicate, educate, and motivate. That's what we're going to do. We don't expect Tim Terry to change anything he does with his ministry. We're going to help him. Help him be better. Do what he does. Because he's serving a great function. You remember in the Bible where God says that we're supposed to take care of prisoners and orphans and widows? You know, there's some commandments there. It's our job. It's our responsibility. As Christians, we're supposed to be doing these things. Tim Terry is doing a great job of it. Let's get behind him and help him. There are great ministries all over this state. I've been all over this state, teaching, preaching, looking, talking, and I find good organizations everywhere. We're going to have alliances with this organization for two reasons. One is to, to build an army, a, a large army of, of Christians working together, and two, to promote them and to help them do what they do better. Does that make sense? We're going to be about helping these guys become successful. And I've just pointed out just a few of them. Colleges that are doing well, we're going to be a part of them. We're going to be a part of what you guys are trying to do here at Charleston. So there is a great um, thing coming on this weekend. If you look on your table, there's a red flyer. We have a business conference coming up this weekend. It starts what time, Jerry? Six o'clock on Friday evening. Okay. Six o'clock on Friday. You need to be a part of that. It'll give you a chance to learn and to grow in your faith and your, in your um, business life. I have to go all over the country to find a conference like this. And we got one right here in our own state. We need to be a part of it. We need to, to be there and help and encourage. We're going to have a lot of young folks there. And, I, and I'm proud of you for doing that. And I'm proud of you letting us be a part of it. So take that and, and get there if you can and bring a guest with you we need to fill this place up with business people trying to make a difference does that make sense why not it's good stuff going on everywhere guys we just got to be able to communicate educate and motivate we're not going to tell anybody how to vote we're not going to tell anybody they got to be involved in political issues a lot of people not interested in that i hate it for them but there are some that ought to do we're going to try to frame everything so that it's framed in terms of morals and ethics and values, not in terms of political issues. We're not going to have any political issues. We're going to have moral, ethical, Christian, biblical values that we're going to fight for. Now, Oren has given us a list of the things that are going on legislative-wise in the state. And you have, guys have a copy of those. See this page right here. Take a look at what's going on. I bet you you didn't know none of this was going on. These things are being legislated as we speak. And if I gave Orrin the, the microphone, he could talk to you hours about these things. This piece of paper 
this newspaper article, here's the title of it. Listen to this. This is where I started a while ago and I got tra off track. In God We Trust draws debate over public display. Think about that for a minute. So this, this is a legislator. He's trying to get a bill passed to require everybody in the school systems to put a, a In God We Trust banner up on their wall. Not sure that's going to work in the state of South Carolina. We already have a law passed that says you have a right to put a, a, that banner up. Not sure that it's, uh, it's, it's going to work where we're going to be able to require people to do that. I just don't think that's going to work. Maybe it will. I don't know. If we do, it may open up the door for some other crazy things. So we need to understand these issues. We understand what's going on, and we need to make good, smart decisions. You need to be talking to people, and we need to be, be weighing in on these factors. Okay? I went to a, uh, a banquet the other day. And this kind of stuff makes me mad as all get out. We had Dab O'Shwaney at our banquet. Great guy. Great coach. I, hate, I feel sorry for you game calls. How many game calls we got? <laughs> we got a godly coach, and I will promise you, he loves the Lord, and he does a good job at what he does. But let me tell you what. He came and spoke at our FCA banquet, and he had to take a vacation day in order to come to our banquet. He could not wear anything that had Clemson on it. He could not talk about the football program. He could not mention anything about the university. But he gave the best message on salvation I think I've heard in a long time from a godly coach. And I was proud of him. But you know what makes me mad? Why in the United States, why in South Carolina should it be a criminal offense to talk about Christ when you're a major college foot, if you choose to. Is that not taking away somebody's right of free speech? Absolutely. And, and I'm telling you, we need to do something about that, John. I'll tell you what else makes me mad. A lot of things make me mad. <laughs> Let me tell you. But when I, see, when I see stupidity going on and I see, when I see Satan winning, it makes me mad. It frustrates me. And because sometimes I think we, we, we're blind and we're, we've gotten complacent. I was at Clemson at a, I use Clemson a lot, I'm sorry, okay? At a football game. And the guy gets up to pray before the game. And they're not allowed to pray and ever speak the name of Jesus Christ in their prayer. What good is it? Why would you not be allowed to pray in the name of Jesus Christ? This is not some foreign country where other religions are predominant. This is the United States. This is South Carolina. Why can't we pray at a major university in the name of Christ? If we choose to. It's gotten bad. And it's going to get worse if we keep sitting around and letting things happen. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm proud of what Oren does. And I'm going to be... The Palmetto Family Council is going to be a major alliance with the Christian Chamber. Because what they're doing is important. But it's a lot more than that. Let me give you some examples. Right in, in, in Spartanburg, in Greenville, and, and in Columbia. Got an old lady whose who's house burnt down at a school, Bowling Springs High School. Um, can't remember her name. Miss Brenda. Miss Brenda Hurst. A bunch of kids from, from the school called us up and said, Hey, can we help this lady get her house? Thank you in the back back there thank you <laughs> um they raised twelve thousand dollars to help this lady they brought the money to us and we said let's build her house How, when's the last time anybody in this room has been to an old-fashioned barn raising anything political about that anything legislative about that we need to have more old-fashioned barn raisings where people get up and go help people who are in trouble we got up the funniest thing I've done in a long time. We got up and we built her about $130,000, $140,000 brand new home with new furnishings in it, everything brand new. Put us a bus right in front of it and pulled, pulled that, what's that movie called? Uh, Move That Bus. And she went nuts. I meant to have that video because it's the funniest thing you've ever seen. She goes nuts. And, and for the first time, she's got her own home because the people of Spartanburg there was over 300 businesses that donated to that project. 
That's what ought to be happening in Charleston. That's what ought to be happening in Greenville. That's what ought to be happening everywhere. That's just one. We're doing a thing right now. We're building a monument, uh, a memorial for our fallen police officers in Spartanburg. It's just a need that we found. The sheriff came to us and said, can you help us? We're building a, mo a memorial for our fallen. Um, so there's, uh, we've got, I think, 11 names on that memorial and, and, and we're building a beautiful memorial. All the businessmen are putting in money and we're raising, trying to raise more money and we're going to build them a monument. And in about a, a month, we're going to dedicate a new memorial to the sheriff. We got one of the greatest sheriffs in the country, Chuck Wright. Good man, loves God. And he's with us wherever we go because he's going to serve and, and do what's right in, in the eyes of, of God. Okay? So, where could you spend your time any better? What could you do in your life that, makes, that, that would that make a bigger impact for your community? We had a, a park accident a few years ago, killed some kids over in Spartanburg and shut down Cleveland Park. We rebuilt that park this past year with all of our folks as part of a citywide Christian effort to make a difference in our state. What a great project to be a part of. You ought to go see that park. It is beautiful. And we did it. People got up, got dressed, put their boots on, and went out there and worked very hard to make a difference. What happens if this stuff goes on all over the state? What else can we do? What other projects are there out there that we ought to be a part of? I'll tell you this. If there's something going on good in this state, I want my name on it. I want to be a part of it. But it's going to take action. It's going to take effort. It's going to take engagement. And of course, leadership. And of course, communication, education, and motivation. If people know what's going on, they'll come. If leaders will lead, people will help and follow. And that's our job. Because we're leaders. You're here today because you're a great leader. You have a business today because you're a leader. Time to lead. Not to sit around. I, I, I like the way Trey Gowdy said it. We had him speak for us last week. And here's what he said. You know in the verse where it talks about if my people, who, he's talking about you and me. Not the president. Not somebody else. You and me. If we will repent and we will get focused and we will get our heart and ask God to forgive us and get engaged and get involved, God will heal our land. South Carolina needs to be healed. Our people need to know and understand what God expects, and he needs, we need to have leaders making it happen. And the leaders are in this room. Leaders all over the state. When we got a problem, we'll fix our problem. The legislators need to know that we're behind them. And if, they're not, if they don't do what we ask them to do, we need to figure out a way to get rid of them, get people in there. How many of you, look, I'm not, I, I'm, not, I'm not really interested in getting involved in that in two details in the, in the politics, but it's going to happen because that's what we do. How many of you went, went to the Franklin Graham rally? That's another thing that we sponsored through the Christian Chamber. And, and you know what Franklin said? He said, I got zero confidence in the Democratic Party in this country. And he said, don't, don't get puffed up because I got zero confidence in the Republican Party. <laughs> zero. He said, I got confidence in God's people. And he said, <laughs> but he challenged us. If you'll type in on your phone, 51555, and put in uh, on your text, and put in America, then he's going to send you some information on that. And he said we could use this to get people doing this. And he challenged us to, to pledge to do two or three things. And the ones I can remember this. He said, I want you to pledge to vote in every election going forward. Every election. Ted Cruz said this in a, in a sermon I heard him preach the other day. He said, in the last election, we have approximately 90 million Christians in the United States professed. 55 million of our people stayed home in the last election out of 90. That's ridiculous. If, if, if we don't wake up and get involved and take responsibility, guys, 
God's holding us accountable for that. He said if, if we can get 10% of the Christian people in this country to get up at more, to get up and vote, the election's done by 7.30, 8 o'clock on election night. Party's over. We can win. We've got to wake up. We've got to get engaged. We've got to get focused. We've got to get involved. And I hate it. I hate to tell you that we're going to have to get involved, but we are. We've got to get it done. It's on our shoulders. Our children are depending on our willingness and our ability to get it done. And not just hope that it happens. Hope, I talk about, hope is not a strategy. Action, activity, get involved, do something, check it out. You know, I, I just started writing down things we got done last year. Man, we got a lot done last year. We got a lot more to do. We need your help. We need Charleston to come on board with the rest of us. We're going to plant Christian chambers all over this state. When I leave here, after I get this one going, I'm going to Rock Hill, and then I'm going to Anderson, then I'm going to Myrtle Beach. I want a Christian chamber in every major city in this state so that we can communicate together, we can work together, and we can connect so that every Christian businessman has a place that they can go and find networking opportunities, leadership principles being taught and help. And this is where these universities have to come along beside us and help us, okay? This is where we've got to work together with these ministries, and we need Oren to keep us informed of all the issues that are going on. We need alliances. We need an army. We need a massive amount of people. And here's the way it works. Running out of time. Nothing on my list have I got to be able to talk about so far. Because I'm changing. I'm telling you what God put on my heart. Here's what's got to happen. If this is going to happen, you have got to learn how to communicate better. It's about communicate, educate, and motivate. How are we going to get that done? I got a friend of mine, Kip Miller. He's got about 500 people in his email list. If Kip Miller sends out an email today to 500 people, Kip is a man of influence. When Kip sends email out, people pay attention because he has influence. If we can get the people of influence, which are you, to send these emails out to 500 people per person, how long does it take us to reach 50,000 people? Not very long. Or you got probably how many in your list? 1,000? 1,500? How many? He's got 10,000 people. If Orrin Smith sends out an email to, to 10,000 people and they send, forward that on to their friends and their friends, that's 100,000, 150,000 people 